Welcome, Barbara. All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Monday mindset call. Today is Columbus Day, but we're every day. So that is why we're here on holiday. No, it doesn't matter. We're here. So um, I'm excited to see all of you here today, too, and um, hope you're enjoying your Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. And we are super excited to be here today to talk about mindset as we continue on with our course on I Can Start. So this is uh, a program for new people coming in. So uh, when, as you're bringing new coaches in, you wanna encourage them to, because these recordings will be up forever, actually putting it in a new in a new system and a new back office that's gonna be super easy to find. And it's gonna be something that's, these recordings will be there forever. So when you get someone new coming in to, uh, to your coaching program, to your, to your coaching business, you want them to start with, I can start, you know, after they finish the course, of course. And, um, but as far as continuing education goes, this is where people would start is I can start. So this is kind of basic information. Maybe some of you've heard it before, but let me tell you, it's great to go over it again because I've gained an enormous amount of, um, of, uh, clarity on this. And I know, um, other people have too, by taking this, um, this course. I'm just. Uh... Hi, Paul. Hi. <laughs> so we're, you know, going over this again, if you, if you heard these kind of things and there might be some things that you've heard before, um, it's just great review because hearing it again, it will always help you. So in today's lesson, um, Deb Erickson started talking about, um, can everybody else see the notes or is, is there a problem with the notes? Everybody's shaking their head no. Recording library, October. Oh, why no one will be able to see it. Well, maybe what it's was, just me. No, everyone's shaking. What do you mean? I see everyone shaking their head. Does that mean I can? Oh, I got two thumbs up from Caroline. Okay. Yeah, they can see them. My problem is, is when I try to open Notion, I, yeah, I cannot, I don't know what the problem is, but that's okay because we can just. Well, that link on. I sent you should open it up no matter whether you have Notion or not. Right. I'm opening it and it says this content does not exist. Gonna put it in the chat here for everybody. That's a direct link to today's notes. Okay, well, we're gonna continue on to class and we'll we can just um I got it. Okay, good. From that. Okay, so um Deb Erickson talks about learn it, do it, live it. So that's her whole program. Cheryl and I have a little bit different program. It's called Plan, Do, Review. We think it's the ultimate system to follow in life. And we do everything around those three words. So when we start off teaching every single class, we basically are telling you a plan or in addition to the plan or you know, some, uh, you know, something new to the plan. So um, that's what we're doing here. Then, then there's gonna be a section called Do, which is super interesting because it's not just about coming to these calls but it's actually doing the things we go over in the call. <laughs> and even that's not enough. Then there's this third word really uh, that eludes people is the review. So, and, and the review as we're gonna go over later is asking yourself, am I doing what I said I was going to do? Super interesting question to ask yourself. Okay, so let's start at the top. So the uh, example, Cheryl, that, that Deb goes over and I, we've gone over this uh, numerous times and it's my favorite analogy in the world, which is getting in a car. Cause I <laughs> feel like, I don't feel like this is what I'm, cause I'm coaching, been coaching people for 20 years. And I see people all the time saying, um, Paul, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm working super hard, but I'm not getting anywhere. Right. And I'm like, oh really? Well, where'd you want to go? They're like, well, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't think about that. 
Well, of course you don't feel like you're getting anywhere because you never knew where you wanted to get to in the first place. But what would Cheryl and I, they're kind of like, a, I don't know, epiphany that we had because we were talking about food shopping. And it isn't necessarily I want to go to the food, you know, go to the supermarket, which is actually the result that you want. But you don't start off thinking like that. You think off, you start thinking about, I need eggs. I need cheese. I need this. I need that. You're, so you're thinking of all the, you know, need some toilet paper, you know, all these really essential things in life that um, would be a huge why to go to the supermarket. Right. And that's usually, and I, Simon Sinek has this great book called Start With Why. And it's a great place to start, even though our, so under plan, we have three letters, which is RPM, which is the result, the purpose, which is the why, and then the map, which is the M. Right. But Cheryl, I know you're obsessed with the P as, as being the most important part, and you're 100, 100% right, because without the why, there is no need for anything else. So yeah, talk I, to us a little bit about the why and why it's so important. Well, and I think it's, for me, it's super important. And I think for a lot of the other people that I coach and talk to, you have to have a reason why you're going to do anything. And here's the way I look at it. So when I very first started, I had no idea what result I wanted. You know, 26 years ago, I had no clue what result I wanted. Um, I didn't want to work at Taco Bell. That was the result I wanted, right? Which is not really a result because that's in the past. And so moving forward, I needed to have a why of why I would do all of these things to get to my result, which I didn't necessarily understand back then, but just the, the result for me seemed to come as I continued to work, right? Um, but my why was always very clear. My why was because I wanted to prove other people wrong. Always my why was super clear to me that I wanted to be successful and prove all the people wrong who said I couldn't be. So my why was always very, um, very prominent in my life. And I absolutely love that because when a hard, when something hard came up or when an obstacle got in my way, I did not care. It did not stop me. It did not slow me down. My why pushed me through all of those things. And then the result for me um, became more clear as I learned more things. Like I didn't even, I didn't even understand that there was a first class on a plane. I'd never even been on a plane right? I didn't understand that there was a yacht. I understood that there was a boat, right? A rowboat or a paddle boat, right? I, so all of these things that I love and that I think are so um, neat and that, I, and that I think people work towards, I think when I started, I didn't even know that they were available. But I did know one thing. I knew why I was doing what I was doing. And it was to, to do what I just said. And also because I had this very um, inner feeling to help other people. And that's really what I wanted to do. So those were my big whys. And to me, the result back then did not matter as much. So it's easier for me to talk about a why than really understand, because I think everybody's gonna have a different result that they want, but I think, um, and everyone's gonna have a different why also, but I think as long as your why is powerful enough, it's what you always say, Paul, if your purpose is powerful enough, then you know nothing else matter. matters. Yeah. Right. So for me, it's all about the why. Absolutely. So had I met you 20 years ago and was coaching you, I would have heard your why and said, because I want to prove other people wrong. So what, what coaches do, what we do for people is we quantify that. So if you became a one star, would you think you proved everyone wrong? No, no. So I would keep going. And eventually I would get to something where you like, oh yeah, at that point, everyone would know they're wrong. Right. So there's always a result there. You weren't consciously aware of it. Right. Which is super important to be, but you were driving along knowing that it was something. And when I get there, I'll, I'll know I'm there. But the why yeah. was driving you for sure. And it drives everybody. And I, and I, to bring this back to longevity in your coaching business, um, there's a lot of people I coach and they're, well, what's your result do you want? How much money do you want to make? And they say 10,000 a month. Okay, well, why is that? And then they think of like things they want to buy and stuff that would get to equal $10,000 a month, which is kind of ridiculous. Like, first of all, you list the things you want to have and then figure, add all those things together and that's how much you need to make per month. So I'm, I'm searching for a new home. Um, I've got, I'm, I'm looking, I got a real estate agent in Florida looking for a new home. The homes I want to buy found like three or four I really, really like. <laughs> the mortgage on them is 79,000 per month. 
So setting a result of 10,000 a month isn't gonna really work for me <laughs> since the house alone is 79,000 for the mortgage a month. So, yeah. and, it, and you know, when I saw that, I was very shocked at that little sticker shock on the, uh, the, the cost per month for the mortgage payment. Well, Paul, when you pick a castle in Florida, then it's gonna be a little more. I, but I, than, I just being honest, I didn't. I never thought it was seventy nine thousand a month for the mortgage. When you showed me that house, I thought it would be more than that. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> when you do these things, you add all the things you you want in life together. You'll come up with some kind of number, and and that's what you have to set as your result that you want to hit. So it it almost is crazy saying I want X amount of money because you haven't thought about what you wanted yet. You may need a lot less. You may need a lot more. Who knows? I don't know what those, those things you want that would make you feel a certain way. And then let me be more specific in that. That would make you feel happy. Because one of the things I learned, and, and uh, I know Caroline went to the, uh, the John Maxwell thing also, and Cheryl, I know you're watching uh, the, the playbacks right now, but the only thing people want in life, and this is sort of like us um, restating what we said before, because we had said before that you don't sell supplements here, you sell yourself, which turns out to be incorrect. We should never have said that. So erase that from all the recordings that we made in the past. You're not here to sell yourself. That is not what you sell. No one wants to buy you, even though you think you're great and I think I'm unbelievable. And well, who wouldn't want to buy me? Um, no one wants to buy me. What they want to buy is happiness. Everyone at the end of the day wants one thing, and that's every single human being on the entire planet. They want to be happy. That's it. Right. So if you, you know, when you think about what do I sell? I sell happiness. And you're like, no, I don't, Paul. I sell supplements. Well, what are taking supplements going to do? It's going to make you feel healthy. Well, what is healthy going to do? Well, it's going to make me happy because I'm very unhappy when I'm sick. Right. I mean, I'm miserable when I'm sick. I'm just unhappy. So I don't want that. I want to be happy. Happy is healthy. It's two H's that we should sell that, Cheryl. Healthy, happy, happy, healthy. <laughs> um, but so that's a new kind of mindset is that we're here to make people happy, to create happiness in people's lives. Only reason we exist here in this coaching program. And we do that in multiple ways. Not only do we do it through people's health, but we also can do it through the, the, the financial and the time freedom. That is also makes me pretty happy. How does it make, how does it make you feel, Cheryl? Great. I mean, super happy. When you said it, then I was like, yes, that's right. Yeah. That is personal. You don't just want green pieces of paper. You want to feel happy. Right. And that's what the green pieces of paper make you feel. Well, and what do they always say? Money can't buy you happiness. That's what they all, that's what I have he heard that my entire life. Yeah. And that's and, to me, I, that's completely wrong. Cause I, I uh, well, am miserable without money and well, I'm very right. happy with well, no, I thought so too. <laughs> I've always thought that. But then when you get to a certain point and you're not happy, and we see this all the time, right? We see people all the time who are super successful and making a lot of money and they're still not happy. So let's right. just not forget that it is not all about that. That's why I think it's so awesome to be here at Longevity because it really does, um, you know, we get to contribute every single day to others. And I do believe that that's part of being happy. Yeah, so let's just take, let's just play this game. So. If the, if the end result is being happy, everyone wants to be happy, well, how do you become happy? Well, some people can buy new things, they can buy a new car, I can buy a new pair of shoes and that make me happy. But it only makes you happy for so long. Right. True happiness, if you're taking notes, this is a good one to write down. True happiness comes from progress. Or another word for progress would be growth or another word for growth would be elevate. Um, so that's why I'm obsessed with elevate is because elevate means I'm making progress. I'm going up and going up means pro and progress is ultimate happiness. So if you're not happy, it's because you're not making progress. Now, many of your clients won't know that, but they don't necessarily need to go from a 30 health score to a 90 health score to be happy. They can see their health score go from 30 to 60 and be happy because they're seeing progress. You know, we have, Cheryl and I have a bunch of weight loss clients that we are dealing with and working with. And it's interesting dealing with those people because Cheryl, how, how um, happy are people who are not making progress losing weight? Oh. <laughs> well, they 
might want to quit whatever it is they're doing. I mean, yeah, they, miserable. the most interesting thing I've ever seen. And I didn't really realize that until you and I were talking about this earlier, but it's right. If you're not making progress and if you, you have to realize, you have to help your clients realize that they are making progress somewhere because maybe this woman isn't making progress at losing weight, but my goodness, does she feel better? Is she getting healthy? Absolutely. So I think it's super important. And if, if a person ever, I was thinking of this day, if a person ever has left us, left you, left me, it's happened to all of us. It means that they were not feeling a certain way. They didn't feel like they were contributing. They didn't feel like they were making progress. They didn't feel like they were growing, whatever it is. But just be clear, because I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. So if we can help our clients realize that in different ways, they are learning, growing, progressing, whatever it is, then it will make all the difference in the world and they will not leave, right? They won't, because there's no reason to leave if you are getting all of those needs met. Right. And making progress in with all those needs. Absolutely. Like, am, I, am I growing? Am I contributing more? Like, so it's not just contributing, but it's got to be, am I making progress with this contribution? Yep. It's all of them. It's all of yep. those above. Yes. All of them. And what, so what's interesting, just to take this one level further, is the number one prescribed drug in, in America is Prozac by like a hundred miles. Now, why is that? Well, the number one value people have in the United States, like 98% of the people, their number one value is security. Their number one need is certainty. So how much progress can you make if your number one value is security? You can't make any because you're afraid to step out of the box and grow. So that's how Prozac becomes the number one prescribed drug in the world is because of people's mismanaged values, mismanaged needs and how they're meeting those needs. So super, super interesting. Now we're really getting into mindset here. I mean, I really feel like that is powerful what we just went over. So hopefully everybody understood that. Um, I also want to talk about um, my story. I tell a lot about weight loss, about soon to be brides. So they come to me and say, Paul, I just bought a size six dress. I'm currently a size 10. My wedding is in two months. You need to work some magic here. So they're not coming to me necessarily with a result per se. They want, they're coming to me with a why. They want to fit into this dress on their wedding day. Now the result is they haven't figured it out, but in order to drop, you know, those two dress sizes, you need to lose like 20 pounds or, or whatever the number is. And it depends on the situation, but they're at, they may not be hundred percent aware of what the result is, but you can help them as a coach figure out that, okay, we got to get, you know, and actually, you know, the, the dress size itself is enough of a result to call that the result to get into a size six dress because that would classify as a result. Forget about weight much weight you weigh because it, you know, um, obviously there's muscle and there's fats and they take up different amount of space. So the goal is just to get into that size six dress, but the why is what's driving the whole thing. So that's why we really want to paint that analogy. So everybody can follow that. So then we go into the result. We know what the result is now that I want to make this amount of money per month. I want to get into this size dress or get to the supermarket, you know, because we want all these different foods. Now, the other thing that the car knows is where you're at. So we're going to talk about that in a minute, in a minute, talking about your asset list and things you have going for you. So you know where you're at, but basically here in the coaching program, bringing this home is your volume. That's where you're at. You can go look in your back office. It'll tell you your volume and your rank immediately. So you can figure out, I am here. I'm a one star. My volume is $6,000 per month. Super easy to figure out where here is. Now you're here, one star, $6,000 a month in sales, and you want to get here, which is five star with $100,000 a month in sales. So now we have those two spots figured out. Awesome. Now we got to have a map on how to get there. And Cheryl and I designed something called the power of one, and I'll put a link into it in these notes. I didn't get a chance to, but um, hopefully everybody knows where that's at. And that is a, a business plan. That's a business plan to show you how you can just do one thing a day. And over time that multiplies and you can achieve your, the result that you want. So that's, that's a business plan, but, and we help people design business plans here and you went over the business plan many times in our courses um, on how to get from where you are to where you want to get to. 
So what's interesting though, Cheryl, is that while you're driving and, and most of us have had a GPS running while we were driving at some point, let's say that there was an accident or there's a traffic jam. What does the GPS do? Um, it just redirects you in a different way. So that it you don't redirects you. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter if the map changes. The map could change a whole bunch of times. Yep. Because you went this way and oh, there's a detour, there's construction, there's this, there's an accident. Gotta go around. Has the result ever changed? Nope. Did the reason the why you want to get there change? No. No. The why and the result do not change. So is the map important? Of course it is. Can't get from point A to point B without a map. But be aware that you're going to have to make adjustments all the time because there's always going to be construction. There's always going to be an accident. So um, that's super, super important. So what Deb has done, and, I, and those of you can see their notes, um, is made an asset list out. So of all the things that you have going for you, you know, when we, Cheryl and I were talking before the call about assets, like Cheryl, you talked about in tennis, your skill set is improving enormously. You're making massive progress on your skill set. Right. So that's an asset of yours. Yeah, um, that's super important. And as you know, with, with the coaching program, knowledge base. So are you learning things every single week? Absolutely. That's getting better. So that's a good, a good thing. So we're looking for celebrations really is what we're doing here. Um, I gained some experience, you know, in this, I, um, have certain personal traits. I'm a go-getter. I'm a, I have a lot of initiative, you know, those kind of things are working for you. Um, you know, so, so you want to just really brainstorm and think of all the good things you have going for you. You have unbelievable products. You have an unbelievable platform. You know, there's, there's so many things that we could write down that are going for us. But we also want to be aware of what's holding us back. So there's a lot of us that when we go down to the do section, they know why they want to go there. They know what the result is they want. I want to get the five star. I want to have this much kind of volume per month. They know the map because they've heard us tell it a hundred times, but they're not doing it. So the number four thing is what is holding you back from going all out 100%. And that's what each and every single one of us has to figure out is what's preventing us from going all out. Now, Deb would say it's a fear, which is absolutely correct. Uh, it always comes back down to a fear. Um, but I was, I was talking to Caroline because I, I would love to have her come on for a second. But she just finished 75 Hard. For those of you that don't know uh, what 75 Hard is, it's a, it's, a, it's a hard program. So you have to, to follow all these rules. There's a plan. You have to follow these rules. You have to exercise twice a day. One has to be outside. You have to drink a gallon of water a day. And the interesting thing you got to do is you got to read 10 pages of personal growth a day. But I didn't know this about Caroline, but um, I don't know if this was something you were necessarily afraid of, but you just, you said you weren't doing it, that, that personal growth every day. And by doing it, being forced to do it for 75 days straight, how is your attitude towards personal growth changed? And not live without it. So you went from, I'm not doing that. That's not important to, I can't live without it now. Yeah. And actually that was the reason that I chose to do the 75 hard was because that was part of the requirement. And that was something that I was not doing full throttle beforehand. It's super and interesting. I, Cause I thought you were just doing it to lose weight and, and win the no. healthy body challenge. But I, then yeah. <laughs> you, you said it's just so I can do some personal growth. Yeah. Cause I was, I was already doing two workouts a day. They weren't I mean, all of those other parameters weren't exactly they were, but it wasn't a huge stretch. But the biggest growth I've had was from the personal growth requirement of that. So Absolutely. your hard was really the personal growth part. It wasn't the exercise part. Right. Which is super yeah. interesting because Cheryl's like, Cheryl and I are both like two exercises, two workouts a day. That's nothing. No. We could, that's, that's not Some hard. days I did three. <laughs> yeah, like how we do too. You know, like, let's go do a fourth, you know. Um, but the personal growth part of it. Now, so you went from, and would you say you were, I would say you were afraid of personal growth, but you just weren't doing it. I hadn't bought into it. 
It, and it was the same thing in the coaching course too, when we did unit five, I was like, eh, fine, I'll do it. And probably because I didn't want to see what was in that course and figure some stuff out about myself. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, realizing that that, uh, that personal growth is so, so critical. I just said, well, I have to do it then. Yeah, super interesting. And I know Cheryl and I are, and, and a bunch of other people, including you, Carolina, are, we're working on a, our own version of 75 Howard, but it won't include a lot of those things. It'll include personal growth and doing Facebook lives and things that are, that relate to the, uh, the coaching program and building a coaching business. Um, but it's so interesting to hear from you that by doing it, um, for se- being forced to do it for 75 days straight because you wanted to finish this and put that in your cookie jar, that now the transformation has occurred to where now you can't live without it. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's made it, I mean, yesterday, you know, was the first day off. And I was, I was like, I, where is my, and I love the structure part. And so I was like, where I, it was different yesterday. Totally different. Not, yeah. I, I don't even have the words for that yet. Yeah. So it's an interesting, interesting conversation because that's my one fear of the whole program is that it's not 75 hard. It's the rest of my life hard, hard. <laughs> is, what the, is what the name of the program should be. Now I get, if you, now the, I guess the, the, the mentality is if you can make it 75 days, because we all know that like 66, 67 days um, builds a habit, you know, habits in stone. So you pick 75 and Caroline, I think you said you, you didn't even know why he picked 75. Did you? Yeah. I, I can't find any particular reason. No. Yeah. I, I do know that, you know, a habit is um, set in 66 days. So um, he picked 77, 75 for whatever reason. But the, the, the thing of it is, is that um, doing it consistently for that long changes, you know, it, it rewires your brains what's happened. Yeah. And even the, um, you know, sticking to the diet part. So sticking with keto yesterday, when I had the opportunity to be like, eh, whatever, I really didn't want to whatever. Well, that, yeah, that's mean, the key is, is what happens to people when they get off of 75 hard, do they continue doing the workouts? Do they continue doing the personal growth? Is that in you now? And I think his, his goal and his thought pattern is, boy, if I can win 75, 76 is just automatic because it's just going right. to keep going. Yeah. Which is, I believe the attitude you need to take on is that I'm still 75 hard. I'm, I'm still hard and I'm going to continue going to 150 hard. For 365. <laughs> 365, 365 hard. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Well, congratulations. And thank you for coming on and sharing that with us. Cause I think uh, everybody um, got some value out of that, hearing that story and seeing that. So boy, I, like I, I always, now maybe it's just the Marine in me, but I believe whatever you're afraid of, you need to go do. I mean, there's this fire walk that for some reason, since I was 16, I wanted to do it. And it's been a few years since I was 16 and I still haven't done it. So maybe there's some fear in me, which I have to overcome and get on it and walk across the fire. And I do understand that once you walk across fire, everything else in life becomes quite easy. Um, and that there's, it's hard to say, well, I'm not doing that because once you put that in your cookie jar, next, next feat is to walk across water, which is, which is actually, I think would be easier than walking across fire because it's not as hot, but, um, yeah, so that is, uh, it's super important to figure out what's holding you back. And, and, and that's where the neural tools come in. So there's, there's neural tools that now neural tools are kind of like affirmations. So they're just like, you know, if you say I'm not worth it, well, she's got an, a, a neural tool that says, Oh yes, you are, you know, so we're reprogramming things and it takes bombardment for that to happen. Remember that 97% of what we do comes from the subconscious mind and only 3% comes from your conscious mind. So to change the 97% with only 3%, is going to take massive effort. But there's also another thing you can do, which is listen to subliminal recordings, which goes straight to your subconscious mind to work and to do that. So I have a couple, and I'll post another link to the subliminal recordings because I feel like I owe all of my success to those subliminal recordings because they have reprogrammed my mind without my conscious mind saying, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. My conscious mind is get a chance to do it. It goes straight to my subconscious mind. 
So, th- Joe, let's talk about the, the the three steps to leading yourself because I know this is your your favorite three things here um, to do. So we're actually in the doing stage now. We're not just planning this anymore. We're doing. Oop, you're muted. Yes, the very first one is to unmute yourself. And no, it's to be intentional. That is the very first step to leading yourself. So you have to know what you want, why you want it, and you have to have a plan on how you are going to get it. And I think that's uh, that's really good. And I love how you guys, or I guess how we always say, um, by uh, live your life by design, not default. And I yeah. love that. So that's what it is. And the very so anyway, so leading yourself, be intentional. Um, and then make sure that you follow the plan that you have set for yourself. Um, the second one is ex- exceed expectations. So it's kind of like, I don't know that every time I hear that, it's kind of like go the extra mile, right? Yeah. I mean, that's really what it, what that's all about. And I know that um, there's a great book coming out by Ed Milet, who I absolutely love. He is unbelievable. Um, but he's got a new book coming out called One More. And I don't know if he talked about that on the on the thing. I haven't yeah. even seen this. Yeah, he's the last speaker. Yeah. So, but he is unbelievable. And he talked about the whole thing in life is one more. It's got to do one more rep, one more this, one more that. And that's how he got to be so great as he just had the one more attitude, which is one just exceeding everything. expectations. Yeah, one more everything. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And then the the number three, um, the third step to leading yourself is be consistent. And that just means do it every day. Every single day is what that means. And that's what John, I love John. He always says stuff like that. You know, you have to do it every day, 365 days a year. Do you do it on Sunday? Yes, you do. You know, that's when he was talking about personal growth or whatever, but I love that. So Caroline, if you can come back on again and tell us a little bit about being consistent. Like a lot of people I'm sure listening to this are saying, well, that's not important. I'm just going to do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But what changed when you did it seven days a week? You know, it became, I think, even more than a habit. You you had to, well, not even a habit. It's like on the days that you didn't want to, you had to show up for yourself and say, look, you committed to this. You're going to do it. You have to do it today. And there, there was no exception. So I just had to. Even if I, although I didn't really not want to, because I wanted to make sure that I finished it, but absolutely you had to show up for yourself. And um, that that story from uh, UPW, the going out to dinner, um, and how many times have you not shown up for yourself? So, yeah. you know, that it all just tied in. Yeah, the self-confidence you gain from 75 Heart is tremendous. First of all, because it's hard, but second of all, because you showed up 75 days in a row and you now proven to yourself, I can do that, which very few people can say that in this world that they have shown up for anything, you know, even making their bed in the morning, 75 days in a row. Um, so we push here, take your supplements every day, right. you know, and that just, it could become, so it's not just 75 days, but it's your whole life, you know, and, and but there, there's, there's some very, there's some magical things that happen when you say every day. Well, and it, and a few other things became really important to do mentioning the supplements is, um, you know, before I was like, oh, well, I'll try this and I'll try this one today. There was no more trying. It was a very, I, I have them all written out on note cards. I have them all separated by times to connect with my meals. And it's all very, again, I don't want to say regimented, but it's, it's very well planned. It's very well planned. Very intentional. Very intentional. um, You know, and it was just, and I think it brought up everything else that I was doing um, and set the intention for those three things that we need to do or that I want to have accomplished every day. And yes, by the end of the day, all of those things are done. So obviously, you up every day. Right. So obviously, going into it, you, you and other millions of other people thought mm, every day, how important is that? Or you're kind of had like a negative attitude towards the concept of every day. But now what is your attitude now towards every day to being consistent? It's happening. It's not even a second thought. It's the most important thing there is, is what you're saying. 
Yeah. Because had you done this five days a week or three days a week or whatever, six no, days the a week. Whole, the momentum piece is so huge. You know, I there's so there were a couple times when I would be doing my first workout and I would have to hop off the machine or whatever. And it would lose track of how far I had already gone and it would start over or it would pause and I was up on a hill or whatever. And you lose that momentum every time you stop. But if you just keep going, even though it's hard, it just gets easier because it becomes you and it doesn't, um, I'm not going to say it doesn't take as much effort, but um, definitely that whole locomotive where once it's going, it can, you know, it can smash through a wall, but it can't start by smashing through a wall. Right. So the way I look at it, this is just my own personal thing. If somebody likes this or not, can adapt it into your life. But um, so every day of the week is 14% of the week. So there's seven days and seven times 14 is hundred percent. So if you were, if you were consistent every day, you're hundred percent consistent this week on doing whatever, exercising, drinking water, doing your personal growth, getting health evaluations, whatever it is, you're being consistent if you do it seven days a week. Now, if you took off Sundays, you subtract 14 from 100 and you're at 86. Not a bad score, but that's not my standard. I'm, I'm at least in the 90s. You know, now you take two days off and you are down to 72%. 72% won't get you anything in life. Remember we talked about plane taking off, it's got to be 100% throttle. So just by taking Sundays off, you're now at 86% throttle. So there's something very, very magical when you say every day and just being consistent. And it doesn't, we're not saying every day for the rest of your life. There's, I believe there's seasons in life. Right now, um, I'm going through a little construction in my house in case anybody has not uh, figured that out yet. Um, it's just a season though. I have to get through this painful, painful, um, you know, er, er, time in my life, but when it's done, it's done. So um, was there a lot of pain in me getting to five-star? Yeah, it was the hardest thing I've done in my whole life. It was harder than the Marines. Um, Cheryl, I know getting to Black Diamond wasn't exactly a walk in the park for you. Um, she had to give up her whole life and travel with Doc for six years and, uh, and have no life and have no money. But you pay the price and you there's a big, you know, is it worth it? 100%, but there's a big price to pay to make Black Diamond. But just like John says, anything that's worth having and anything that you really, really want, it will be hard and it will be all uphill and there's going to be a million and one obstacles and all of these things. But then you just have to make the decision that you're willing to do that. And that's why also I think the why is so important because yeah. if your why, you know, your why has to really has to push you up the hill. It has to pull you up the hill. And on some days, it has to freaking drag you up the hill, right? So it has to do all of those things. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's go around and have people put in the chat here. Um, so let's start at the top here. So start with why. So just type in your number one why. Why are you doing this business? Why do you want to do this business? Don't everyone type at once. So we don't have an overload on the chat here. Well, I think it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers should be flying. <laughs> if you your why down. There should be hundreds of answers oh, okay, from one Jill, person. Jill McGordy says, answering God's call in my life. Trisha, to learn how I can teach others. Okay. Freedom, share the hope I found, change my financial state, be financially free. Okay, let's stop there with Holly because Holly said to be financially free. Now, Holly, what is the result that you want to get? So how much money would it take for you? Can Holly unmute herself? How much money does it would it take for you to feel like you have financial freedom? Probably... Three thousand a month. Okay. So the, the way to answer that question, I'm not sure how 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 you came with that number, 
but it would be that if I made less than this, I wouldn't feel financially free. So it's not necessarily the pie in the sky number, a billion dollars. It's the number that crosses you over from feeling not financially free to being financially free. And everyone's answer is gonna be different. There's no right or wrong answer. Cheryl and I had an in-depth in -depth discussion on this earlier today. I said 250,000 a month would make me feel financially free. Um, and Cheryl's like, nah, that's, that's, not, that's not gonna cut it. Cheryl has a little, little higher standards than I do, but um, it, everyone's has a different number. You have to figure it out for you what financial freedom means. What number does that mean? You gotta put a number on it. Cause you, cause you can say all these things like, oh, I have freedom. Well. What does that mean? You, you just go, go outside and take a walk. You got freedom. Like that's not being specific enough. I design my own schedule. I quit my job. I make up my own schedule like that. That is, you have to be, go more than just everyone's typing in um, generic things in here. Um, you know, even back, back said, I was share the hope I found. Well, what does that mean? Like, so you can share it with one person and feel like you got your why. So to share the hope I found with 1 million people, or it's, it's, it's gotta be, there's gotta be um, something that is very specific on, you would, you would have met that wants of yours by this. You know, Lorenzo says freedom. So what do you exactly do you mean by freedom? So we're just trying to dig deep. You know, we're this, these are all surface answers that everyone gives. And that's, that's usually what happens. You're going to get that from your clients. You're going to get that from your coaches that you're coaching, but you want to dig in and find out, well, why is that? Why is that? Now, eventually, what answer will you get to after you dig to China? Because it would make me happy. That's where everything lands up at. Right. And I think it's important for you guys to know, because I see that a lot of people put freedom, which is my number one thing too. But like Paul said, you have to know exactly what that means. Like what are three or four or five things that look like freedom to you? Right. Like for you to feel that you are free because we are free. We're in a free country. We can do whatever we want. We can, right? right? But look at Heather. Heather's like sort of but you know what I mean? I mean, we can say what we want to say. We can do what we want to do. But what is it that, what are those things that you want to do? And yeah, let me to me, a you, bum on the street is free. You, know, yeah. you can do whatever they want today. And remember that it also is going to come down to, to do the things maybe you want to do that will take money, right? Because that's what, that's what money is, right? That's what John Maxwell said. So money just means freedom right? Money means you have all sorts of different choices that you can make. But I love pulling up what those things are. Like, what are they? Um, and knowing what they are, because I think if you just say freedom, or that's the only thing really that you have in your mind, then I think like Deb told me, <laughs> Cheryl, that's a cop out. When I was telling her what my why was, she's like, that's a cop out. I said, no, no, that's really the reason why. And she said, no, it isn't. And so, you know, just digging in and really finding out you know, be super, super specific because remember, it's going to have to push you up a mountain and, yeah. and pull you up a mountain and obstacles will come. They're everywhere, right? Everywhere, every day. And your why has to be strong enough to blast through them. Yeah. We talked about the GPS, you know, you're going to run into construction, you're going to run into accidents. Do you have a big enough why to go around this accident? and kick the detour or are you just going to head back home? Because it's not that important to get there anyways. Most people head back home. They're not willing to go around the block and, to, and follow the detour. Okay, let's, so go, let's go to the next thing. So result, what is the result that you want to get? Oh, look at Shantae. She's got it there. Two help. Three million coaches. a year in what? Sales and income? What's what's three million a year? Profit. What do you mean profit? That's what she wants to make in a year. Okay. Well, there's which different. Very, which is very interesting because 
That's exactly what Paul's is. Did you guys collaborate? She may know that 0.01% of the population makes $3 million a year or more. Which is 300, is that 300,000 a month? 250,000. 250, yeah. So this, this is what we're at. When we're asking result, we're asking for a, a volume number or an income or a rank. Now I love saying five-star because five-star means all of that. You make it the five-star, do you have volume? Yeah. Do you have income? Yes. Do you have freedom? Yes. So we should see hundreds of people typing in five-star at this moment because that should be everyone's destination. Or maybe it's not. Maybe you're just, well, I'm, I'm gonna live a two-star lifestyle or four-star, whatever it is. That has gotta be Black Diamond. Gotta be cool like Cheryl. Not good <laughs> enough to be five-star. Okay, awesome. What's next? Next is the map. Does everyone make me feel good and type in yes that I know how to get from where I am to where I wanna to get to? <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I, I think it's so interesting because for years and years, we certainly did not have a map here at all. Like we, <laughs> we, we didn't. And it's so fascinating. More like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, uh, it was a scavenger hunt, which actually I love scavenger hunts. So that seems like it would be fun, but it yeah. really isn't when it's a scavenger hunt in your business. Um, but the interesting thing I was talking to Paul about, as I said, I hope people understand and realize that the map that we have, have here will get them to where they want to go, no matter what the result is that they want. Or no matter, you know, no matter what the result is that you want, this map that we have here will get you there. You just have to have, again, a big enough why so that you will follow the map. And I, I guess consistency has a ton to do with it. Because I was thinking um, when I, so I had to build the first time with Dr. Wallach and running out and doing all of those seminars every single day. There's nobody on earth that is cons as consistent as Dr. Wallach. But then when I came back and I wasn't, and I was married and had two little kids and I wasn't able to, I still had to work every single day, seven days a week for three years, three and a half years to make it to the black diamond, um, you know, to make it as, to become a black diamond. So it really is about consistency. But again, my why had to be big enough to make me do that. Yeah. That's a great point, Cheryl. Maybe think of something else as well. Now, to be a great mom, how many days a week do you need to show up as a mom? <laughs> eight. Is it like <laughs> is it like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or it's eight days a week? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, so you want to be a great right? a great anything. It's every day. It's not. Well, my kids don't matter on weekends. You know, they can they they fend for themselves on the weekends. Um, you would have a, a hot mess on your hands if that was the case. So. Another good analogy. Now for the for the tough, we're gonna we, we always have to end on a tough note here on, on the on the hardest question there is. Uh, why have you not made it there yet? What is holding you back? Why why have you not gone hundred percent out and achieved the result that you want? Had you know fulfilled all those whys, check them all off, and followed the map. Yeah. Mindset's a good answer. Yep. And so's fear because mindset, yeah. Yeah. Fear and mindset are the same thing. Yeah. Well, mindset is, uh, we're, we're, you know, part of mindset, and there's a lot of things that fall under mindset, but one is the chart. So the green and the red. So are you in the green or are you in the red? Yeah. Broken focus. But I want to get clear about something because I see that people are putting life in there. And I want you to just be very cautious about saying that it's just because of life. Because believe me, anybody that's been successful, they had a life and their life was a hurricane and a tornado and an earthquake all at the same time, just like ours. 
But I love that you guys put that because it made, makes me remind myself when I say, well, you know what, Paul, I lost my phone and life's happening and whatever. And he's like, that's great, Cheryl, but that is not the excuse that we're going to have today. That is not the excuse that you can use, right? <laughs> it's like, okay. Even though I catch myself doing that. Well, this happened with this person and that person. It does none of that. That's fine. That's fine. So just be really conscientious that we can't use me included me number one we can't use the excuse that it's because of life I guess is the way that I want to say it if that's what I do that's what I have done in the past right I have used oh this and that and this is why I can't do it and oh and you know so just as and and I love that um I know that Becca and Caroline talk a lot about living your life by design, right? Instead of default, which for me, default is always how I've done it, right? And then what I do is I just compartmentalize and I don't let anything in life happen. And I focus over here, but I can't do that anymore, right? So I need to make sure that I'm doing it all together in a way that it works. But in order to do that, I really believe that it has to be that you design the life you want. And not only the life you want, but you design the day that you will have. Yeah. And in doing that, I think that will make a difference for all of us. And I'm not the best at doing that. Let me just be the first to say, but I'm working on it, right? Every day. Absolutely. But Cheryl, I'm, I'm around you a lot. Love your children. I'm with your children all the time. Treat them as my own. Um, I adopt them. Uh, so, uh, I know the uh, the challenges you have with two children. Caroline has six children, so yeah. it's your it's your problem times three, which is unimaginable to me, not yeah. even fathomable. No, I know. I have a tough time taking care of myself, uh, so this is this is completely foreign to me. Right. And yet somehow, she found forty five minutes twice a day, right, to work out. And that's not even it. It's the 10 pages of personal growth. On top of that. Yeah. Now, Caroline, um, did you have life at all going on during this past 75 days? I I did. I did. And the kids would even remind me. They'd be like, Mom, did you go do your second workout? That's great when you get, get the buy-in from the whole family. That's fantastic. It is. They're like, hey, you see this cup of supplements? Did you take them yet? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you got a whole accountability crew going on there. Yeah, it's nice to be accountable to teenagers. <laughs> all four of them in the house. That's see? Oh, geez, you got, <laughs> no wonder you're so successful. You got all these accountability partners. Yeah. No, my, my, no, my point is that everyone's yeah. busy. So Absolutely. You can't use busy as, as an, and I, and I, uh, people wear that badge of busy, like, like it's something that, oh, I'm, I'm I, well, I've been busy. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, it's not a, don't think you're, you're awesome because you're busy. That's not, that's not what we're here for. We're here for freedom. Um, so it's important just to not, to not use that. Like Cheryl said, as, as, uh, as an excuse. Right. So what else is holding people back? Tara said fear. So fear of what Tara? And Shan, uh, Shantae has her hand up too, Paul. But Tara, go ahead if you're there, my friend. There she is. Unmute. There you go. Um, there you go. Okay. Um, this, you know, fear of it, of it all, really. I mean, like, uh, talking to people. Um, I had, you know, chances this weekend where I was with friends and we were camping and, you know, we brought it up a few times, when we, but it was just like, didn't want to fear the fact that they would just totally down, you know, like. Yeah, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. It's, 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 it's I, I did get the gist of what you said. Um, so it's it's um, it it's knowing that you always have choices. You know, I, I think that the the thing we all need to watch out for is saying I have to do that. You know, says who? 
you're making that up. So we got to watch whenever you say, well, I had to do this. Did you really? Now, Cheryl, you know, she'll be like, oh, I can get Jonathan to take justice to, to tennis, or I can get so-and-so to do that or do that or do that. Or she went out and found a, 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 a gentleman from the church to help out with some things. So it's, it's never about resources. It's about being resourceful. That's the whole key to this. So there's, there's always, well, there's a will, there's a way. So it's figuring out how can I make this work in my life so that I can do what I, what I said I would do. Because the review part of all this, which, which we haven't got to, but we have to uh, end the call here, is am I doing what I said I was going to do? I said I was going to do five health evaluations this week. Did I do that? The answer is yes. Awesome. Yeah, everything in, everything's in, in, in going well. If you didn't, then that's when we start feeling bad inside. And that feeling of bad inside is from a lack of integrity. Right. Because you said one thing that was going to do this. So your thoughts were this, but your actions were this. And when those two things don't line up, we feel like we're not living in integrity. And that is the worst feeling you can have. Yep, that's right, Paul. Okay, we have two hands up. So real quick, Shantae Long. You got to unmute. Hi, you got it. Go ahead, Shantae. She's unmuted, like she but I can't hear her for some reason. Right, I can't either. You must have us on Bluetooth or something's going on in your car there. We can't hear what you're saying. Okay, don't try and fix it while you're driving, Shantae. I don't want you running off the road. Oh my gosh. Okay, try and fix that, Shantae. Let's go to Reggie real quick. Hi, Reggie. Yeah, Shantae's audio is not connected. Okay. Go ahead, Reggie. Hi, everybody. Hi. Please forgive me. I got to ask, though, <laughs> man's question. Paul, how did it feel to beat the Chiefs last night? <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say that. You know, I, I thought Amy would. Is Amy on here or she's not on here? Listen, I knew she wouldn't show up. Listen, um, Paul's living by design. Listen, my, my <laughs> mindset today is at a level with, 10. Let's just say that. Yeah, okay. You guys are playing some good ball right now, man. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. It's a, it was last night was a best feeling we've ever had here. So they did mm. play so well. Oh my gosh. Okay. The problem is, and this is a, this is a big problem, Cheryl, that, um, so this is just me talking a lot about the counseling I may need uh, on February 13th. <laughs> I know because, uh, the bills are going to play Tampa in the Super Bowl. So those of you that are betters go ahead and bet on it now. Cause that's, what's going to happen. And Tom Brady has been a little bit of a problem for 20 years for the Buffalo bills. <laughs> We've never beat him in 20 years. No. No, he's beat us every single time. Every single time in the Super Bowl or every single time you've played? During the season. So we played New England right. twice a year for 20 okay. years. That's 40 okay. games. We are all in 40. Oh. oh, oh, well, this could be the year. You need to put that into your goal. Let's Let's hope so. Because if we lose the fifth Super Bowl, my Listen. mindset will be very bad. And I will need counseling for the rest of my life and... Actually, I'm afraid you prevention. might start playing, so we <laughs> definitely don't want you out there playing. We need you here with us, so yeah. Okay, well, every one of those players need to envision that, I can tell you that, yeah. starting now. Jeez. Okay, so let's go to Shantae really quick. Reggie, that was a great question. <laughs> Hi, Shantae. Am I, am, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> you sound like a I'm Verizon driving. commercial, but... Well, I was driving and I didn't know. I've never actually talked on here, I don't think, but when I've been driving. So anyway, um, I think what you said about the map, needing to adjust the map, is something that trumps from time to time the consistency. For instance, my day started at 5.30. No, actually at 4.30 this morning. Okay. And I am driving. By the way, Paul, I'm from New York. So I'm driving all the way from Alabama to New York today. Now, there's absolutely no way, seriously, no way, if I'm going to make an 18-hour trip 
to fit in the various goals that we're supposed to have today. So I have to adjust my map. Last week, I already did this a week ago. No, uh, Saturday would be a week, a week ago, Saturday. I've already done this because I was already in New York at my mother's who's waiting hip surgery. When my father-in-law died, I had to get up and go and make the 18 hour trip on Saturday. Well, you know what it's like. I, maybe you don't, hopefully nobody does know what it's like to have a funeral, but you, there's not, you don't, no, you just don't do those things. And I guess I'm saying, Granted, you may have a comeback and you may say, well, there you could have done this or you could have done that. But I'm just saying you helped me today by saying that I have to adjust my map sometimes because there are certain circumstances where you just can't. And so it's how, those how, long times, is your, your, how long is your drive? You said 18 hours, 18 hours. So like, that's a dream for me. If I could be in one place for 18 hours, I would be listening to personal growth for uh, nine of those. And I would be making uh, phone I've calls. About got that, I've about got that done. Uh, the nine hours. Okay. So I haven't been doing the personal growth, but there's the other things you talk about, right? The to add two to your list every day. Uh, and that kind of thing I can't do. Yeah, because so I can only navigate my phone <laughs> so much without if I'm going to arrive alive, you know what I'm saying? May yep. I say, Shantae, um, Shantae, you're on the call. Shantae. That is like, that's it. You're on the call. That's like yeah. fantastic. Oh, I know. So, yeah. But, but I also want to say that, you know, so I have X amount of personal growth hours I want to do a year. So if I do an hour a day, 365, I want to do 365 hours of personal growth this year. Now, do I do it every single day? No, because I go to a Tony Robbins seminar. That's 12 hours a day for six days straight. So maybe I won't do personal growth the next day because I my mind has any more personal growth, it's going to explode. So there's there's some time I take some time <laughs> off. And then there, there might be other days where I'm making phone calls for 10 hours a day or I'm answering emails for 10 hours a day. So it may not necessarily be perfectly like I do all these things every single day, but over the seven day stretch, I'm doing everything that I said I was going to do. It may not look perfect, but I made the adjustments along the way. And maybe I did a whole day of personal growth, a whole day of phone calls, a whole day of, I didn't add two people to my list that day. I added 10 people to my list that day. So it's just, you know, at the end of the seven days, or well, at least at the end of- I just think it's important. Yep. I just think it's important for that element in reality to be put into the mix because I am proud of Caroline, 75 days hard. Wow, I mean, that is amazing. But I can tell you, I know I could not do that. Maybe one day in my life I can't. But consistency over a seven-day period, I can do that. But on a daily basis, there are times when it just cannot. It's not when you're when you're got certain check marks that certain things have to be done in a day's time. Sometimes that doesn't work. And I guess I just wanted to put that in there because I feel that that is an important balance to have here. The adjustment of the map is not an excuse. It's a reality. That, and that was very helpful to me because what I got out of that is what I'm saying to you now is I adjusted my map. I'm not going to feel guilty or disappointed in myself or feel like, what did you call it? Sad, you know, that you weren't true to yourself type yes. thing. I'm being very true to myself because I'm trying to fill in what I can do today, which I've already listened to, by the way, Lewis Howe's recent um, podcast. I don't know if it was recent or not, but he did one with Mark Hyman. And I'm telling you the truth. You'd have thought it was Dr. Wallet. It was absolutely phenomenal. I've already listened to that today. And cool. I've already listened to, you know, I've already listened to something else. Plus now I'm here with y'all. So by the time my day is over, because I probably still got about eight hours to go, I, I probably will get quite a bit of my personal growth for the week done. Okay. But, let me, let me, so let me, let, me, let me just ask you though, what, you're going to New York because you're, because uh, why? My mother is awaiting hip surgery. So I have to help my mom navigate life. So I do the cooking, the cleaning, putting her to bed and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, listen, this is nothing personal, nothing like that. Your mom means a lot to you. My mom means a ton to me too. But I do want you to recognize you're still making a choice. Now, it absolutely 
can be the right choice for you, but everyone gets to make a choice. There is a choice, just putting this out there. Not that you should do this, but you don't, you're like, no, I'm doing my workout. I'm not going to drive 18 hours straight. I'm going to work. I'm going to walk for 40. I'm going to get, stop the car because you could pull over right now and walk for 45 minutes. I'm just saying you could do that because it's, it's a choice. I just want, my point of this whole thing is that we all have choices and I want you to recognize that you don't have to do this. You don't have to do anything. You are choosing to do this. Everything we do is a choice. So again, I'm not questioning your choice on driving straight through. That is everyone's choices are completely up to them. I'm, I got to make choices. I have enough trouble making choices in my own life, let alone helping you make choices. But it's just, I just want to make everyone have that awareness that nothing is a have to in life. And you, you, and I just heard you say the word have to on numerous times. That's why I'm bringing it up. All right. Okay. Awesome. Everybody hope you got some value out of that. We'll get the recording up so you can send it out to your, your, uh, your, your teams. And we will be back here tomorrow, which is, uh, my favorite day of the week, which we do celebrations, challenges, and then small changes. We can make adjustments as we talked about today in your business. So if you're, and that's for Paul, that's for everybody. I just want to make sure that I put that there's one call now for everybody. And that's yep. at three o'clock. Same place, same time. Same place, same time. Hey, awesome. Great job, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great evening, everyone.